Ezekia.
But the good news is, God, the, the battle has been fought and already won. Amen. Father God, our victory is in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. And our testimony should be that we are children of the Say thank you, God. God, have mercy on all of us. Father, we pray for the sick and the afflicted, the careless and the unconcerned. We pray for those who don't know you in the free pardon of their sins. Father God, we pray for those who are on the battlefield. And God, we pray for those who are in leadership in this United States of America. Not only in America, but all over the world. Because God, you are God to everybody. You are not God to just one or some or one nationality. You are God of all. And God, we thank you that you are no respecter of person. We thank you and we love you today, God. We love you. We come to give you praise and glory, God, on today, God. And for those who don't know you, God, today is the day that you should give your heart to the Lord. Repent. Turn from your sin. Come on the Lord's side. Father, we pray for the pastor that you have sent to this church. A shepherd of your flock. A shepherd who tend to the flock. We thank you, God, a man after your own heart. And Father God, we thank you for anointing him afresh today. We thank you for old listening ears that we may hear what you are saying to us on today. Because Father God, you are spirit, and we are spirit beings. And you said those who worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, we welcome you here today, Holy Spirit. Have your way in the place. Father God, meet everybody at their point of need. Father God, some need one thing and some need another, but it doesn't matter whatever we need, God. Father, you got the answer to it all. We say thank you, God. We praise your holy name. And Father God, as your word go forth, let it be seed in fertile ground, Lord God. And let it bear fruit in the days to come. Father God, it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Serving the Lord, we'll pay off.
After a Our guest, amen, brother Cody Simmons, amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. And happy birthdays and anniversaries to those that may be celebrating and are celebrating, amen. Miss Deborah Bird, Miss Deborah Westfield, and Nigel Cochran, amen. Celebrated birthdays this week, amen. Happy birthday. Amen. All our June babies, amen, please stand. I know it's a few of you in here. All our June babies, please stand. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to our June babies. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. Any anniversaries in June? No anniversaries. Amen. Happy birthday. Again, please continue to keep those on our healing list in your prayers. Amen. Continue. Praying for Trustee Pete Macbeth as he continues getting better. Amen? Amen. 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 So continue, continue, please continue. And I know we are a praying church family. Amen. I know many in here have prayed. Amen. And continue to pray for each and every one of us in here. Amen. And God hears your prayer. And God works. Amen. Uh, sometimes I tell y'all all the time, he don't work fast as we want him to work. Amen. But he working. Amen. Amen. For the Bible tells us as all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord Amen. and are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. So God is working. Please can also continue praying for those experiencing bereavement. Amen. Loved ones going on to be with the Lord. Amen. Please continue lifting them up in prayer as well. Amen. Again, we just want to remind each and every one of you on this coming Wednesday, June the 30th. Amen. We will have our church conference at 630 p.m. Please, sirs and ma'ams, please mark your calendar and be here Wednesday evening at 6.30 for our church conference. Amen? Amen. Coming on the second Sunday in July, if it be God's will, amen, we will celebrate four years of completion here at the New Prospect Baptist Church. Amen. 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 Again, we, we thank God for each and every one of you. Amen, and, and we look forward to the work God still has for us to do. Amen. amen, I always tell people when they ask me how it's going, amen, I tell them it's going great. Amen, amen. and God is working, and that's all that matters. Amen, amen. that God is working so that he may be glorified. Amen. amen, so again, amen, we thank God and we thank the New Prospect Baptist Church family that God laid it upon your heart to select this little young boy from, well, I ain't going to say little, but this young man from Gaffney. So, okay. I am going down, Miss Bessie. I done lost 49 pounds. Amen. Amen. So I'm going down. My church clothes starting to look kind of sluggish on me. Amen. But God is still good. But as I look out, I see Miss Sharon and, 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 and Miss... Uh, and I see Miss Gilliam, Miss Shirley Gilliam, amen. We must have been thinking alike this morning. We letting us, our colors shine bright for the Lord. What I yell on this morning. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. May heaven forever smile upon you. Amen. And we pray, amen, that you all uh, get something. But I've learned that in order for us to get something, amen, we have to give something. Amen. And I ain't talking about your tithes and offering. Amen. I'm talking about you have to give a praise. Amen. To receive something. Amen. God bless you. Give them a hand clap as they come.
on making a way that's why I can't give up on him because he keeps on making a way for me amen and that kind of ties in with the sermon this morning as you turn your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5 the book of Luke chapter 5 amen we bring you greetings this morning God is our father Jesus the son and the Holy Spirit to our wonderful ministers, amen, our deacons, our trustees, our members, and our friends. It's always a great honor and privilege to stand here at 6801 Cross Anchor Highway behind this sacred desk and proclaim the word of God one more time. Amen. Because it keeps on making a way for me. Amen. Let the Lord have his way. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Jesuit and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, prayed that he would thrust out a little from the land. He sat down and talked the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Go out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. When they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. And their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which are in the other ship. That they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. God's word for the people of God. Amen. We want to talk from a topic this morning. Trust in God for the overflow. Amen. Trust in God for the overflow. Many of us have a hard time too many times believing for just enough blessing. Just enough to pay the mortgage. Just enough to put gas in the car. Just enough to put groceries in the refrigerator. Just enough to keep the lights on. Can I get a witness? And below up, that is a wilderness mentality. Because when you are in the wilderness, amen, you have just enough to get by. When God, amen, by Israel out of Egypt, amen, he took them through the wilderness of just enough. But it was only supposed to be a highway to the land of overflow. Can I get a witness? Yes, amen, the land that flowed with milk and honey. Now don't get me wrong, amen, just enough is definitely better than never enough. Am I right about it? But it's not the promised land, and God doesn't want to sell us short, so why do we want to do that to ourselves? Am I right about it? God wants to take you to the promised land with the overflow. And I stopped by this morning to tell God's children that he has a blessing with your name on it. Am I right about it? 
you prayed, amen, you have confessed the word, you have worked, amen, your faith, and you have stood on the word, and even when it seems like you are throwing out your net, amen, but yet you are not pulling anything in. Am I right about it? One thing I love, my brothers and sisters, amen, is that in order for us, amen, to uh, receive the overflow, in order for us to be blessed, amen, the first thing we must do, we must put ourselves in the right position. We must put ourselves in the right position, amen. When, amen, we watch ball games, amen, when we go to ball games and we see, amen, uh, different positions, amen. Uh, you have to put yourself in that right position to make the play. As yesterday, amen, I was at some ball games all day, amen, and my daughter plays first base. She has to be in the right position so that they can get the other team out. And I come to tell you this morning that many times, amen, we want God to bless us, but we in the wrong position. And I'm not talking about the position you hold in the church. That's what's wrong with us nowadays. We get too caught up on our titles. I wish I had a witness in here. Amen. We get too caught up on our titles. Amen. But God isn't talking about the position that you may hold. But yet and still he's talking about where you are standing for him to bless you. If we remember, amen, when Moses went and met God, amen, up on the mount, God told Moses to take your shoes off because you are on holy ground. And all I come to tell you this morning is sometimes, amen, you have to be careful where you are stepping if you are God's child because you have to line yourself in the right position. Some may ask, preacher, how do I line myself in the right position? Well, first thing, amen, you have to line your life up with God's word. In order for you to be in the right position for God to bless you, in order for you to be in the right position for God to do things for you, you have to line your life up with his word. Am I right about it? Because there's an old saying, amen, that God won't bless no mess. I wish I had a witness in here. God won't bless no mess, amen. Therefore, we must find ourselves being in the right position. But not only must we be in the right position, amen, we also have to learn to obey him. We have to obey him because obedience to an instruction, even if it seems ridiculous, amen, we have to shift to a ridiculous blessing, amen. We have to, re, have to be uh, willing to take ridiculous instruction. I'm reminded, amen, of the story in 2 Kings chapter 4 with the prophet Elisha. Amen. And the widow woman, her husband had just died. And the woman didn't have nothing. We got some Bible reads in here, don't we? Amen. The woman didn't have nothing. Amen. And she went to the prophet and told her, amen, that they're going to take her sons to pay the debt. The prophet told her, amen, what do you have in your house? The woman said, I only got a little oil. The prophet told her, amen, to go to your neighbors and get some vessels. The word of God says, I think around in verse 4 of 2 Kings chapter 4, to go and get many vessels. Can I get a witness? The woman, amen, the widow woman, she went and got the vessels. And she took the little oil she had and she filled up the vessels. She took the oil she had and kept pouring in the vessels to well. She turned to her sons and said, are there any more vessels? I wish I had a witness in here. She asked her sons, are there any more vessels? Sons told her, amen, that that's all of the vessels. Went back to the prophet and the prophet told her, amen, the prophet said, if you, amen, take this and pay off your debt. And all I come to tell you this morning that sometimes when you want a ridiculous blessing, you have to be willing to take ridiculous instruction. Amen, we have to obey him. If we are fully trusting him for the overflow. Can I get a witness? God usually takes us through a season of nothing just before our breakthrough. And I don't know why, amen, but he keeps on making a way for me. Can I get a witness? But as we look here, amen, in the book of Luke, Simon and the guys had been fishing all night long. And they just couldn't catch nothing. And I got some fishermen in here, I know I do, amen, and 
they go out, amen, and you throw out, amen, and you can't catch nothing. And you may go to the other side of the pond, the other side of the lake, and you still may not catch nothing. And when somebody asks you how did it go, you tell them, oh, they just wasn't biting today. Can I get a witness? Amen. And now one thing I've learned about fishing is that if you're going to be a successful fisherman, you have to have some patience. Because sometimes you go out there and as soon as you throw it out, they biting. But sometimes you can be out there almost an hour before you get a bite. Can I get a witness? And that night, amen, they just couldn't get a bite, amen. And they went, amen, to Jesus, amen. And Jesus had spoken. He told Simon in verse 4 to launch out your nets in the deep, amen, throw them down for a drought. Some of us, amen, too many times we are fishing in too shallow water. God has a deep blessing in store for us. But in order to get that big, deep blessing, amen, we have to get out in the deep water. Can I get a witness? Too many times, amen, we want to stand in the shallow waters where we can see our feet. But I stopped by this morning to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that if you step out in the deep water, he will hold your hand. Can I get a witness? Because I'm trusting God for the overflow. And they told him that, amen. And when they told him, we can't catch nothing. But God, Jesus, I'm going to do what you told me to do. Matter of fact, Simon said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I come and tell you all this morning that one thing I've learned, Mr. Bill, is that you can't take some people for their word. Amen. They'll tell you one thing out the left side of their mouth. And they'll tell you something else out of the right side of their mouth. Can I get a witness? One thing about God, amen, you can hold God's word to be true. Another thing I've learned about God is that if he done it for one person, he'll do it for you too. Can I get a witness? G and Simon trusted him and Simon... And the guys threw down their net. Verse 6 says, when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. I stopped by this morning to tell God's children that you have to trust God for the overflow. Can I get a witness? God has something big in store for you. But you have to fully trust him. You have to always remember who God is and what God can do. Can I get a witness? And God has a blessing for you that's overflowing with milk and honey. God has a blessing for you. And I know you've been through some things in your life. I know it seems like you've thrown out your net, but you haven't caught nothing yet. And it seems like the harder you throw your net out, the more short you keep on coming up. Can I get a witness? But I come to tell you this morning uh, to just throw your net out a little further and throw it out a little deeper. And when you throw it out and you're trusting and holding God to his word, you'll start pulling something up. Can I get a witness? And it'll be too heavy for you to pull it up by yourself. You'll need somebody to help you pull up your blessing. Can I get a witness? Those guys started pulling up the nets. Am I right about it? They pulled up the net, threw some fish on the boat, pulled up the net again, pulled up some more fish. They called their neighbors over. I come to tell somebody is that when God starts blessing you, don't you be a selfish receiver. 
Can I get a witness? But when God starts blessing you, you make sure you bless somebody else. Because the word says that God told Abraham that I'll bless those that bless you. And one thing I know my brothers and my sisters is that when God is giving you an overflowing blessing, you have to make sure you bless somebody else. That's why I love Mr. Pete Spears. Mr. Pete Spears used to bless people. And he tell me, I say, Mr. Pete, what do I owe you? He say, Rev, you don't owe me nothing. I got four fields of this. And I got three fields of that. He blessed people because God was blessing him. So I just come to tell you this morning is that when God starts giving you a blessing and your blessing is overflowing, you make sure that you bless somebody else. Is there anybody here that's receiving an overflowing blessing? And you want to tell God thank you. That's why we must always trust him. I'm going to trust him through the good and the bad. I'm going to trust him whether I'm happy or sad. I'm going to trust him whether my pockets are empty or full. Can I get a witness? Because the disciples were unsuccessful. But when they done what God told them to do, I come to tell you this morning that you got to do what he tell you to do. Quit doing it your way. Quit taking the shortcut. Quit trying to go around here. Quit trying to go under that and do what he tells you to do. And then he'll give you an overflowing blessing. Is there anybody here that's trusting God? for an overflowing blessing. Let me hear you say, yeah. Ain't he all right? Let me hear you say, yeah. Trust in God for an overflowing blessing. God can open it up. Give you more than you have asked him for. Give you more than you deserve. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Have you tried it? Do you trust him? Because one thing I learned about God is can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like G, he's my friend. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like he's my friend. He picked me up, told me to run on, pick me up, told me to pick me up, told me to run on, he's my friend, can't nobody do me like can't nobody do it like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like He my friend. Can't nobody do me, do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, can't no. By it, do me, do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Amen. You deserve the glory. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. And all.
God has more in store for you. You just have to uh, trust him. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Let us look to our heaven. Father, we thank you for all of your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for everything you have done in our life. God, we pray that we've done things pleasing in your sight today. Knowing, God, we only want to glorify you. Father God, Lord, we pray that as we get ready to depart this place, but never from your presence, God, that you continue keeping watch over us both day and night. Knowing, God, that your eye is on the sparrow. You're always watching over us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we are trusting you for the overflow. Lord, somebody feel like they're in a drought right now, but Lord, the overflow is just around the corner. God, they just have to keep on trusting and depending on you. God, Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we pray, God, you continue healing those that's in need of a healing. God, Mr. Pete, Macbeth, God, continue healing him as only you can, Father. Anybody else who may be in need of a healing, heal him, God, right now in the name of Jesus. God, be with those bereaved families. God, be with those going in and out of the hospital. God, we have to trust you whatever we're going through for whatever we may need. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we love you today. And God, we always will glorify you. Not to him who's able to do it seemingly and abundantly. That's overflow, God. Above all things we may ever ask for or think. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said. God bless you.